Longhorns. When they roll that defense out there, they're going to make plays up front. The big guys up front, they're too deep. They've got a lot of exceptional players there. The linebackers are playing well today also in the secondary. They're coming along pretty well. They've done a great job allowing only one first down in the ball game, I think, Joel. So it's been a great effort by that Longhorn defense. And as we look at the Dodge first half numbers, when you give up only nine yards of total offense, you're doing a lot of things well. About nine yards. It's, it's, it's an amazing stat. And Time of possession, though, pretty close, though. You see the couple of turnovers there by Texas, one on a punt and one on an interception. The ball should have been caught, though. So, really, everything clicking for Texas. You see the rushing yardage. You see the passing yardage doing well. And Colt McCoy, this young man, has really done well in this football game. You come in as a freshman quarterback. He's a red shirt freshman, delivers well to Lima Sweetie, get his first touchdown throw of the, of the season. And he just kind of finds his way out there and does a good job in, with, with the football. And Colt McCoy showing that he's a capable runner as well. Not as nippy as... Vince Young was in years gone by, but I tell you what, this young man looks like he's going to be the real deal for the Texas Longhorns. You know, we talked about him and what he needs to do as a quarterback out there and actually being the leadership out there, being able to execute. I think you're going to have to give him an A in the leadership role right now. He's doing a good job and also the execution. So give him a check mark here, and we'll give him a check mark on execution. His accuracy, I think, has been very good. Check that and maintain composure. So right now, Colt McCoy is working with an A report card in my book, and he's done a great job for this football team today. So an A across the board. Boy, I wish I took classes with you as a professor. Start of the second half as it heads over to Muzzy and right through his hands out of bounds. So the mean green, and they get it going offensively. Only one first down, and that was, as we mentioned, by way of penalty. Now, back downstairs. Yeah, they're going to go with Woody Wilson, the junior from Fayetteville, Arkansas, who's out of Coffeyville Community College in Kansas. He will get the start. At the outset of the game was Matt Phillips. From the 20, on the delay, Jamario Thomas. Yeah. Good work. As Crowder tripped him up, he got away from Michael Griffin originally. Otherwise, it would have been a gain of only a yard or two. Well, now North Texas is really based on the running game, and they feel like that if they can get the running game going, they can... You know, they can throw the ball around the yard a little bit. They're not going to really challenge this secondary deep because Texas has too much speed. But they feel like if they can run the ball, get a few first downs, that's what they're really coming in here trying to accomplish. But early in this ball game, the Texas defense has done a great job up front. That's not a bad way to start, so you get four or five yards there to start with your first, uh, first rush of the half. So five yards on the ground after picking up only nine in total offense in the first half. It's a major accomplishment. Thomas again, and this time bouncing outside, they've got a first down. And picked it up on their own, not by way of penalty, as it's a gain of seven. Marcus Griffin got him that time. Well, they list Jamario Thomas as 5'11 in the program. Folks, I don't think he's 5'9". He's not 5'9 or so. Kind of hard to find back there. He gets in behind the offensive lineman and kind of hides, and he's got quick enough feet to get to a hole. You see everything stopped there, and he just bounces to the outside, and the big guy's in front of him. The Longhorns can't find him. Yeah, last year missed four games, parts of others with a hamstring injury, but two years ago led the nation in rushing. And he also had 17 rushing touchdowns in 2004. So he's definitely capable for this Texas defense. And that's another story completely. Thomas now making some moves and getting away for close to another first down. Pulled down from behind by Michael Griffin, the strong safety again of eight. Well, what he's doing is just picking his holes. That's a good job by Tamario Thomas. His ball kind of starts to the right here. Woody Wilson hands to the right. Then he just cuts back to the outside. He sees a lane here, and then Michael Griffin's going to have to come over and try to make the tackle. Finally gets him to the ground there after about a seven or eight-yard gain. Actually, nine or so on the play, Bill. Well, it's interesting because we thought that's what they do the first couple of series, but they go, go, go. went away from Jamario Thomas. Actually, they threw the ball the first couple of series. So now it's going to be second and two. Nudged right outside of the 40. Wilson only needs to. Goes for a lot more and he's got his man. It's complete. Taking it in, Brandon Jackson, the junior from Fort Bend, Texas. And a first down all the way to the 26. He out jumped for the defensive back, Terrell Brown and Aaron Ross. Well, the ball was a little bit underthrown. That's what helped Jackson make the catch here. Woody Wilson, a little play action fake and getting back in the middle of the pocket there and steps up and finds some space and tosses it out there. The ball's a little short. Good job of jumping up there and not allowing it to get the back of the, to the secondary. And great catch and takes a pretty good shot at the end of the play there, though. They have 33 yards by far. Their longest play offensively. It comes on their first possession of the second half. And they've held it close to three minutes to start the third. 
Wilson short side option. Danny Pace cracked coming up and getting him just shy of the 24 yard line. Brandon Foster and Griffin over there, the junior from Austin, popped him pretty well. Yeah, you come downhill and you get in that little alley, that's what your safeties come down to do, and they popped him pretty good. Good job of making a good firm tackle on Woody Wilson, not allowing him to turn up and get yardage. It'll be second and eight. Trying to get on the board for the first time today. They had a field goal try blocked on their second possession of the second half. A 24-yard attempt. Set up strong to the wide side of the field. And it's dropped that time by Jackson, who just caught the deep ball. Well, they, they shifted the tight end across the formation here, which closes him out. He's not able to get off, so you only have two receivers in the pattern, and... Ball's thrown on timing right there. you got to make this grab and just trying to run before he catches the football. I think Wilson's got a pretty good uh, tool set there to work with. He throws the ball pretty well. He's got good footwork, and he gives him a little added dimension running the ball as well. Third and eight from the 24. So a big third down coming up. On his fourth, and it's gone in the third. Four wide receivers set and a dead ball foul coming up. It'll be a false start on the offense, North Texas. Prior to the snap, false start offense, number 66. It'll be a five-yard penalty and it remains third down. Dylan Lineberry, first team all Sun Belt Conference last year, the senior from Houston, the right guard. Yeah, and he is probably their best offensive lineman up there. And big Dylan there just rocking a little bit in there in his stance and got the flag called on him, but he, they call him their bell cow up there. He's your toughest offensive lineman and does a pretty good job for him. And he's an anchor. He's like a coach machine inside. He's that big, <laughs> hard to move, and he's got pretty good feet as well. I'd say five by five, but he's 6'3", so he's a lot taller than five. He's a, he's a tall coach machine. You got machine. it. So now third at about 13. Yeah, they're going to reset the clock. Didn't look like anybody called a timeout. Now the play clock begins, and Wilson and North Texas for Daryl Dickey ready to go. It's got to be frustrating. You know what you're getting into, and it's a nice payday, let's face it, for a team like North Texas. Jamario Thomas dashing his way. A stiff arm to the first down, and still... Extra yardage after that to the 13. Well, go with your bread and butter on third and long. Go ahead and hand off to Jamario Thomas. He's your biggest weapon on this football field. And a little draw play. He just bounces it back to the left side. And out runs Robert Killebrew around the corner until he knocks him out of bounds. The jabber by Jamario just cut to the backside. Good job there getting outside. See how quick he is. Accelerates. The handling of the ball as well. And Gary, you played linebacker at a very high level. Uh, you can have, the speed can work against you. You can run yourself out of plays, too. Yeah, you certainly can. If you over-pursue, that's something these linebackers are really coached on very much is be patient within the scheme because they're all great athletes. No room on the short side. The boundary goes to Mario Thomas for about a yard. Terrell Brown over there. Boy, I saw Crowder locked up and a couple of others. They were banging. Yeah, you know, a couple of years ago, Derek Johnson played here at the University of Texas, and he had such great speed. That was the one thing they always had to do is slow him down, slow right. him down. Almost had to count 1,001, 1,002 before you take off because you could run yourself out of plays, and that's what kind of what you're talking about, about linebackers over-pursuing, especially against those cutback runners like Jamario Thomas used on the couple of plays back. And there is so much team speed on that side of the ball, as we see already from Texas. That may be a consideration for Gene Chizik and his staff. Try to contain these guys so they don't over pursue and take themselves out. Second and nine from the 12. Ross, the defensive end, lines up a tight end and splits out. And Wilson into the end zone. Touchdown, North Texas. Making the grab, Brandon Jackson. So the meet green on the board. First drive of the second half, balanced it out, got to Jamario Thomas involved, and Brandon Jackson with the two big grabs. Well, they got what they wanted. They got man coverage on the outside. Brandon Jackson's going to work up and go to the outside here. Ran a little corner route, going towards the post. He comes back to the corner and caught him looking in the, in the, in the backfield. Aaron Ross, left cornerback, kind of peeked in the backfield and kind of lost coverage on him. 
Pop good throw that time. Gets the extra point. So after only nine yards of total offense, an 80-yard drive, Gary, to start the second half. It's now a 21-point deficit. Woody Wilson energizing the offense, but finding West Gary reasons. Jim Knox, sweltering day in Austin. Temperature now 95, 96 degrees. Well, the offense did their job for North Texas coming out, putting points on the board. Long drive. Now can the defense do the same? Bell directional kick and a short one at that, and it's going to be taken by one of the up men for Texas. And it's Melt, the running back, Henry Melton, a sophomore from Grapevine, who alertly picked it up and took it out. So good field position for the Horns as we had next days in there at 6 4 280. Dallas Griffin. It'll be Selvin Young. Nice lane, and then makes his own. He's about nine on first down, up to the 39. Well, what a way for the Bean Green to start the second half. Our Nissan scoring drive, 12 plays, 80 yards. Brandon Jackson with the receiving end. Well, the 12 yard pass from Woody Wilson. So it took a little more than four minutes off the clock. They didn't have any drives for the first half, so nice way to begin the second 30 minutes of play. And you see Texas on that first play, just kind of road grader offense, big offensive lineman just doing a great job of blocking for the running game. Young again only needs a yard. Makes the most of it. Runs with a, a great deal of awareness, vision. He doesn't quit on the play, does he? No, he doesn't. He's a veteran back there. He knows what he's doing. He's going to get in behind those guys and just take the hole that they give him and make something happen. Just needed a yard, as you said, Joel, but he wound up getting five or six when he looked like he's only going to get a yard or so. So 15 yards on the ground for Selvin Young in the second half on two carries. And overall, on the day for Selvin Young, he's at 11 for 32. They've got balance of the backfield. McCoy out of the gun, throwing for the first time in the second oh, half. And it should have been picked off. He threw into triple coverage. Jermaine Dawson can't believe he didn't come up with that baby. Well, he threw that into between three defenders for North Texas, and Jermaine Dawson certainly had his hands on it. Cole McCoy stepping up, trying to throw it to the outside, to the outlet here. But look at the white shirt. There's three guys right around the receiver. He's not going to fit that ball in there. That's one where Greg Davis is going to take him into the film room and say, Colt, see these three guys here? You don't need to throw that ball there. Well, it's almost like he had predetermined where he was going to go with well, the ball. Well, he's going through his progressions, going through his check downs, but the defense just rolled into that coverage and shouldn't even have thrown the football. McCoy now on second and 10 from his own 45 as Jamal Charles in the backfield. And the old Vince Young play. We may not see anybody run that as well as Young did. I didn't then take it the other way. Brandon Moore, and especially with about 15 seconds to go against USC, Brandon Moore on the stop. What a run by Young. Yeah, I tell you, when Colt McCoy runs his play, you know, he doesn't really look like the Vince Young because Vince he had the ability to bounce that out around the corner. Just yes. got to run the rest of the defense, and those are the kind of plays that he made. Colt McCoy's probably staying more within the, 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 the design of the play and running inside off the, ins out, out the kick out block. Well, Lima's sweet, big target on the outside over to the far side. Matching up with Dominique Green. See if they go that direction. It's sweet, but he's not going to get the first down. Good counter by Dominic Green, the sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma, is he short of the first down by a little less than two yards. I mean, about fourth and almost two, it looks like, and I think that uh, probably going to leave the, team, the offense in, or maybe they're going to bring the punt team out. It will be Greg Johnson. How many punts today? And in fact, this is going to be only the second of the day for the Texas Longhorns. His first was good for 46 yards. And Zach Muzzy, the senior from Alvin, Texas, is back waiting at the 10. It's a fake, and he's got the first down. Snap it to the short, man. It went for the first down. And on the carry for the Longhorns, Bobbino. it was Bobino, the linebacker. Well, here's Bobbino here, going to get the football and just take it right up the gut. I was really surprised that they didn't leave their offense on the field at, on that side of the 50, but Mac Brown said, hey, let's go ahead and do the punt fake and give coaches across the country exactly. something to think about. Give Ohio State something to think about this coming week. Good call. 
So it's down to the 41 of North Texas. Charles, short side of the field, looking for a block from his wide receiver, Sweet. Good yardage. He takes it out and gets about five, close to six. And in fact, they give him seven. Dominic Green on the stop. Did you see the gear that he has, the speed that he has, able to break that to the outside? Just floats and just kind of glides. And then when he turns the corner, it's just a burst of speed. Very, very impressive, Jamal Charles. Yeah, he's one of those gliders that he can turn it on anytime. His glide is usually another guy's sprint. Sophomore from Port Arthur stays in there. And again, I wonder why, though, with the ball going right, it's always in his left hand. Now, there's a comfort zone, but it's almost like he's working against himself. It is kind of an unnatural thing, especially if you're thinking where defenders are, and defenders are going to be nearer to your left arm if you're running to the right side. And that's why coaches are tell young running backs to pull that ball in the opposite hand so that the, the nearest contact can't contact the football. He's not exactly going to be able to straight arm or stiff arm anybody. No, not at all. <laughs> it's... Selvin Young back into the game. The senior from Jersey Village High School in Houston. From the 29. Underneath it goes. And Sweet trying to make a miss. He dies. A lot of Sweet. Touchdown, Texas. Well, that's the explosive play capability that Matt Brown talked to us about, and that is you have your wide receivers after the catch. Go ahead and do something spectacular with it, and that's run after the catch. This is after your short throw, about seven or eight yards. Colt McCoy puts it out there. Good job of catching the ball, but he turns inside and then just outruns the secondary. Good job by Lima Swede to make a big explosive play here for his football team. So you throw it five yards. It goes 29. It's a touchdown. First, Dominic Green couldn't get him, and then he stiffed arm the safety, Steve Warren. Johnson for the point after. It is back to a 28-point lead. So that's the answer the Longhorns have for the Eagles of North Texas. 7.44 left in the third. Colt McCoy enjoying it, along with Lima Sweet. Sweet on the receiving end of the 29-yard score. The second touchdown of the game. And the Longhorns, oh, they're trying to keep it cool. By 95 degrees in Austin, Texas. Other games involving Big 12 teams today. Well, Iowa State on Thursday, they escaped. They <laughs> truly survived against Toledo. Yeah, and a good Toledo squad. Game. And then other games coming up. Nebraska, and that's going to be our feature on FSN. That's the second game of our triple header. Bill Land, Emily Jones, uh, our buddy Dave Lapp are all going to be there. Muzzy is back deep for North Texas, along with No Wigway. And Greg Jones, or Greg Johnson rather, will get into it for the Longhorns. We've got 744 left in the third. It'll be Zach Muzzy from the one. Nice lane. Look out. And Collard crossing the 25. Otherwise, it was going to be up to the place kicker. He must feeling good about himself and learning how to run against this Texas defense. And to be a little bit brighter uh, afternoon here for North Texas. Well, they spread it out, but they have Thomas as the single to the backfield. No tight end in the formation. And first catch of the day for Joel Quinn. Last year, a guy that had 47 third straight season that he had led North Texas in receiving. And good to see him on the board uh, playing hurt today. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com, your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. Well, they certainly got a little different pep in their step here coming out here in the second half. You got uh, Matt Phillips back at quarterback here. And Matt Phillips now two for five with that gain of eight. He tried to throw it in the first couple of series of the game. It was not successful for North Texas. Williams, great penetration. Bobino busted the play up immediately, untouched up the middle. I talked about it earlier in the ball game. You want explosive linebackers. Watch Bobino. He's going to be on the right side of your screen here. And he's just going to run right through an empty hole there and get into the backfield, just avoids the block of the left guard. and. That's explosive play by a linebacker. So now third and long. 
for North Texas. Trailing by 28 once again. They need a little more than seven. Almost eight. Phillips in trouble. Man, over the head of Quinn by a long margin as he made his cut, but the pressure was there. He knew he was going to take a lick. Yeah, he's going to take a shot there, and he's just trying to get the ball to Johnny Quinn on the out and up, and Terrell Brown does a nice job of covering him there, not allowing him to get up the field. So a three and out here on this series, and Daryl Dickey bringing Matt Phillips back in, giving him a chance to play the quarterback spot again here, following up from Woody Wilson, who started this half. So Aaron Ross awaits for the punt from Truman Spencer, a sophomore from Mesquite. Gets into it. Now Ross calling for fair catch early. We'll have it back at the 24. When we come back, it's Longhorns with the ball, leading 35 to 7. Be back after this message. Dr. They need those fans and that miss down to the sideline. Jim Knox already filling us in earlier about the way that the Longhorns are staying cool this afternoon as we look at our Firestone NCAA leaderboard and the best records since 1998. Texas, percentage-wise, just behind Miami. It's pretty good stuff. It'll be interesting to see you see Oklahoma there at 80 and 22, how they respond to the adversity of losing their starting quarterback. It's been tough for them up there, but I think they're going to get through it pretty well with Paul Thompson. And not what they planned to do initially, but uh, it's going to work out. For Kevin him. Sneed, nice strike to Nate Jones. And Nate's got a first down, taking it out across the 35. And I bring up the adversity. It's something they can deal with, but you make your plans around one guy, and all of a sudden it's a quick change. Yeah, it really is a quick change. It's something you have to deal with. And that's why, for instance, in this situation with uh, Mac Brown, he's got two young freshman quarterbacks. Neither have played in college football, but, hey, you're going to hang your hat on one of them or, or maybe the combination of both of them if they keep playing like this. And Jeb and Steve doing a good job throwing the ball outside to Nate Jones. We saw Colt McCoy play earlier. Both of them playing very well in this game. So you've got to build some confidence with them and give them some experience. Snead locked in a little bit too tall as Jones got behind Antoine Bush. Well, it shows pretty strong arm on the run. Yeah, and you try to get some depth. You try to get some players in the ball game. For instance, now at left tackle for, for, uh, for Texas, you've got uh, Ulatowski, a young redshirt freshman coming in there, getting a chance to play. And... They have built some experience. They feel like he's going to be a good one and going to be a fit for that offensive line. Try to create, can, you know, continue that dominance up there. But Ulitowski was challenging for a starting job during fall camp. Out of a big-time program in South Lake, Texas. A little more than five minutes left in the third. Jamal Charles looking for a lane. Never developed. Good pursuit down the line. But not much on the carry for Charles. They'll give him three, and it's going to bring up a third and seven. But the man can run. I mean, he is fast. So fast. Small yeah. Charles won the 100 meters in the Big 12. This yeah, year. he was. And we talked about Johnny Quinn. You think a guy is fast at 10 6. Well, that's. He won 10 1 9 was his best last year. Yeah, 10 2 3 to win in the track and field championships, the outdoors in the Big 12. And Wearing sunglasses, no less. Uh, it doesn't take long to get there, right in the middle of your screen, and young man's got a burst of speed, no doubt about it. So now on third and seven, pocket holds up for Snead. Man, a jump ball. A lot of contact, but they're going to say it wasn't catchable for Myron Hardy. We're getting against Desmond Chapman. Well, there's definitely contact, but I guess the line judge out there, he decided that it's incidental contact, and... Both players are running down the field, trying to get it out there. You see the contact. See, when you get the arm out, the arm bar, that, that should be a penalty regardless. I think that's one the official didn't see, or maybe he's got a better look at it than we do, but it looked to me like the right arm of the defensive back was, was certainly there. Desmond Chapman trying to kind of work him out of bounds, and he did so. Number three, Muzzy. Muzzy going back deep, uh, along with Brandon Jackson. Johnson. Johnson will punt once again. A low wobbler. Jackson, tough grab, and capitalizes on the opportunity. Good field position. She's brought down by Bobino. 
And he'll take it out to the 29-yard line for North Texas. You know what Daryl Dickey has done with his football team over the last several years? Last year's probably not a real indication of what his football program is really around of Jamario Thomas. Well, they got it going on their first drive of the second half. Now Woody Wilson's back in there and also a new running back as Evan Robertson is yanked down trying to get to the line of scrimmage. Loses a yard or two. And it was Michael Roy who's subbing in for Drew Kelsey today yeah, in Evan, on that stop. And Evan Robertson, he's got another gear too. He is a really quick back. He's not very big. They list him at about 165 pounds. I bet he's more like about 150, but he's got some wheels and he's gonna he's somebody who really may be able to play with the speed of a Texas defense. He's got more speed than Jamario Thomas. Senior season high school, 1,600 yards in Pflugerville, Texas. A little guy that can motor. It's going to be second and 11. Wilson out of the gun of the long count. Nothing there again. Robertson trying the left side. It was Loki, Derek Loki there, a junior from Denton. Talking about the depth, the front four. Oak Cam and Loki up front. Uh, the starters along with Robinson and Cotter at the ends, and then Roy Miller. Aaron Lewis as well. Arakpo has been in on a couple of big plays today. Yeah, you can just roll them out there, and you got all those guys that can play, and they're, they're somewhat interchangeable, so they're going to play them all in there. They're going to find the ones that are getting the best opportunity. And They've all made plays today. Now on third and long, it'll be third and 11. Wilson on the outs, but the heat prevented him from waiting for Johnny Quinn to turn around and make his square out. And it wouldn't have been a first down even if he'd been able to be there and catch the football. So the Texas defense holds him again, three and out. It's only one drive so far for North Texas all day. Yeah. Since that 80-yard drive. Texas forced him into a three and out with a punt. And last year, out of all the drives against the Longhorns, 44% were three and out with a punt. When you hit close to 50%, you don't give up a first down to your opponent. You're doing something right. No doubt about it. Aaron Ross waits back outside of the 35. Truman Spencer's been busy today. And he bombs out of beauty. Harris, from inside his own 20. A lot of room. They finally, well, I thought they'd get him, and they do trip him up. Just barely. And it was the putter yeah. who had to do it at midfield stripe, basically. And it wasn't a pretty tackle either. His head goes down, and I thought he was going to hurt himself. Spencer had to come up and make the play, but great job by Ross making something, you know, happen there after a catch. This is a booming punt. See him turn it up inside here, and... Good job of running. Looks like you're going to get wrapped up right there and make the tackle, but no, he turns it upside and got to go through the punter, but the punter's got to learn to keep his head up. You know, when you, when you make a form tackle, you got to just don't drop your head. Keep it up. You're going to get hurt. Great run back that time by Aaron Ross. So it's going to be Colt McCoy taking over after the 31-yard return by Aaron Ross. Out of the midfield stripe, 35-7 Longhorns. And waiting for the little dump off to Salvin Young. And he steps out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. That was a little circle out of the backfield for Salvin Young. Look downfield, it wasn't available. Well, if you get to see everybody on the field, he's going to see his tight end. Watch his tight end get right down here. If he holds it, he's going to find he's wide open for a touchdown. Nobody's going to take him, throw it to him, but he decided to drop it off to the outside. That's just a little bit of seizing that a quarterback is going to have to learn to see the field and just wait for your progressions to come through. And the tight end was open on that play. 2.07 left in the third. With the Longhorns driving once again on a first down. Nose tackle, jump right on Dallas Griffin, the center, as we head downstairs. They try to get him into some air conditioning practices so that they can practice harder and at a better pace, and they're not so much interested in running all the time. Young is trying to stiff arm his way to a couple of extra short game, and I'm glad you brought that up because now that players, and he said the guys were right back at it at the end of January, early February, 
now that players condition year-round, you don't need as many two-a-days when you start fall camp. Well, you don't need the two-a-days, and you don't necessarily need to beat up your players or really just try to run them. You know, you take these big 300-mile li linemen, do they really need to do sprints after practice? Nah, he says no. He lets his, his assistant coaches take them by position group and condition them as necessary. Hey, if they've ran all practice, for instance, right. wide receivers, defensive backs, they've ran all practice, and why do you have to run additional sprints after practice? So they've gotten smarter with how they prepare for games and for the season, and they think they're going to have a you know much, a lot more lit gas left in the tank, so to speak, late in ball games. Two play by game. Isaac Thomas. Jamal Charles thought he was going to get a lot out of it. He got nothing. And it's going to be third and about two. But the approach, boy, talk about a significant difference. That may be the biggest difference we've seen in football overall is the way that the staffs now deal with their players when they come back after prolonged periods of time off. Yeah, you, you, why would you think that in the, in the middle of the summer you'd be going indoors to practice? You know, you've got a nice, bright, sunny day outside, but really it's because you want to take care of your players and allow them to play at a higher level for a longer period of time, and they're taking care of them in that, in that regard. Third and a couple, as Charles stays as the single. Two tight end set, and Jamal will get it easily. Out of bounds. Close to the 15. He's got a stride, Joel. Every time I see him run, it's very, very fluid, very, very pretty. When he gets the ball in his hands, he comes up to the line of scrimmage, and it just, it just turns. He just turns on another gear and goes around the corner. I'd like to see him use a little bit more cut back here to see if he's able to get more yardage. So takes it to the outside. He's just comfortable running out there. Why don't you cut back inside here? Might get you another 10 or 15, but he's comfortable doing that. He's a little vertical on his running ability. He's, he's up in the air a little bit. But uh, he's certainly got speed for a running back. And good to see him with the run right and carry the ball in the right hand. Swedes back into the game. Jones on the opposite side. Movement up front. Now nose tackle again, making contact with the center. I don't know if the Colts making a hard count out there or not, but uh, we've had a lot of mean green in the neutral zone today. Head ball contact, defense number 56. It's a five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Well, that's interesting because it's DeMarco Farr and Billy Ray Smith at halftime. They, DeMarco jumped out and said he really liked what Colt McCoy was doing with the hard count this early in his career. Well, if you can bark it out and you've got your guys in tune that early in the season to where they don't jump and the defense does, hey, that's a good thing. Uh, that's something hard to develop over time, and Colt McCoy will be able to do that. And It's unfortunate for North Texas. You know, he got the nose tackle. He's right by the ball. You, you should say he should never jump. So on the first down, the counterplay, Jamal Charles to the outside and in. Touchdown, Texas. Is that smooth or what? <laughs> he just floats. He, he just, just glides. It, it's, just a glo it's just a glide. He's got another gear, folks. and Give him some space to run to it, a little hole to see. He's got good enough vision. You see the big offensive line, good job of blocking out there. And then it's just speed to the corner. And it's almost like he's jogging. I mean, this is not even full speed for Jamal Charles. He is one graceful athlete, the sophomore from Port Arthur, Texas, the offensive freshman of the year in the Big 12 last season. And that tremendous career down at Port Arthur. And that's the city's rushing record down there for his high school career. And she surpassed the OU and NFL great Joe Washington, over 3,000 yards down there in his career. So with 26 seconds remaining in the third, our Aflac trivia. Yeah, what Longhorn has had a thousand yard rusher. Or Texas has had a thousand yard rusher at 11 straight. Do you know the NCAA record? It's pretty amazing when you consider that kind of consistency. 11 consecutive years. And there's a nice tie to it on the Texas sideline anyway when you look at the team that did it more than 11 straight. Not giving it away too much, am I? No, 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 you're not giving it away too much. What a day in Austin, Texas. Red River, October 7th. That's a day everybody points to in the Big 12. Well, you talk about uh, this season and you know, what we talked about Mac, to Mac Brown with about is his season schedule and how they break it up. And he says they've broken it up into several segments. You take the first two weeks, North Texas and the Ohio State game, that's section one. Then you go a few more games, and after you play uh, Oklahoma in the game you just mentioned, that's section two, and then you start your Big 12. So they break it down into segments. They try to coach it that way so that these guys have some short-term goals. 
And now that you're up, and you bring up a good point, Gary, now that you're up to 12 games, you're going to do it quadrant. Sure. Every three games, little goals. Now, the ball comments, and earlier on the phone this week, he said that was kind of misconstrued because it was, it, they were all talking at a coach's meeting, and everybody took like five minutes except for one coach. And that's why <laughs> he thought, he, a lot of people thought it was going the other way, and he was making comments about TCU. He wasn't. It was just that one particular coach's conference. They were all speaking, and it was more than a conference. It was a big group. We are ready for the final 15 minutes in Austin. Joel Myers, along with Gary Reese, Jim Knox, 42-7. to And our Aflac trivia, well, it's 11 straight seasons with a 1,000-yard rusher. The NCAA record. Apply. Texas has 11 straight. Who's got more? North Carolina. 73 to 84. Man, the 1,000 yarders for Texas. Well, Ricky Williams and Cedric Benson accounted for a few of those. They certainly have. And you see the others here. Sean Mitchell, Vince Young with last year. Hodges Mitchell, 99 and 2000. So Vince Young as a quarterback uh, kept that streak alive. It's a shame they don't have any fun here in Austin, Texas. No, no, they don't have any fun. They don't, they don't run the ball at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, North Texas gets it back. Deepest deficit now at 35. Woody Wilson stays in there. And underneath, what a shot. Marcus Griffin just put on. No wigway. Paid for that catch. So it's a game of about seven on first down. And the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com, where you'll find thousands of brand-name products and savings of up to 70% every day of the week. It's Overstock.com. Yeah, Marcus Griffin, you see him coming on making that tackle, getting his first start today with his brother out there, Michael Griffin. That's pretty good stuff. And Marcus was a pleasant development in fall yeah. camp. He really stood out. Michael is in his second season as a starter. Grew up right here in the Austin area. And then Michael's uh, potentially could be the Thorpe Award winner again this year. Last year, Texas had it. And Michael Huff, best defensive back in college football. And I feel like that okay, guys, it's over, it's Michael over, Griffin may have some of those same intangibles. Robertson taken down by his own man, Joel Foster. Roy Miller was there as well, but he ran right into his left tackle. Yeah, they've had a nice run. When you think of Basher and some of the other guys, Nathan Basher here, they've had great running our defensive backs. Now you talked about Roy Miller. Let's go ahead and take a look at this young man. You know, a lot of rave about him. I know Jackie Sherrill in our studio and really likes him. He's a, he's a big body. He's a young guy that Got a, got, a, got a motor, and they talk about him playing. Let's kind of take a look at little Roy Miller out there on this defensive series. He's a sophomore from Colleen. Goes at 6'2", 290. And they say he is quick on his feet. Third and short. Throw for it and get it. Johnny Quinn with his second grab of the game. Michael Griffin collared him immediately, but it moves the chains. Yeah, and a good job here for North Texas, moving the chains, getting the first down. I really like Woody Wilson, what he does at the quarterback spot. He gives you a couple of dimensions. He throws the ball well enough to, to really get the ball down the field. He's going to get it out to Johnny Quinn time and time again this season. But I also like his dimension of running the football. With what they do offensively, if you can create another threat to help with Jamario Thomas when they get into their conference play, I think Woody Wilson's going to be a perfect fit for this North Texas offense. Well, that's your sixth first down of the contest. In comparison, 24 so far for the Texas Longhorns. Yeah, another false start. Dead ball, delay, five-yard penalty on the offense. Remains first down. A delay this time. It came from the linesman. Usually it's the back judge. Who well, the back the judge flag. did throw the flag. Okay. He was out there. I did see him. He's actually giving the little delay signal. So he's doing his job, Joel. Staying on top of it. A little more than two minutes gone in the fourth. You have to be determined the difference, only the margin. We know the outcome of this game. They haven't talked about it, but, but for North Texas, Ramon Flanagan, he's their offensive coordinator. He's actually upstairs in the booth calling the plays. One of the youngest coordinators in college football. A lot of time for Wilson. And just out of the reach of no wigway. Downstairs we go. That's you know, we had them up there, we had them up, way up high and yeah. at Texas Tech in Lubbock. That's a be beautiful video board here, no doubt about it. And I think they need to find a really good name for it, though. Wilson tried to create, he puts the ball to the ground, and Texas comes up with it. Lost it on his way down. 
It looked like Michael Griffin was the first one in to cover it. Well, they're calling a big jumbotron here, the Godzilla Tron, and kind of sounds kind of strange to me. I don't know. Maybe we can send some more emails to Knox at Fox. We'll find a better better name for the, the big screen up there. And looks like there's going to be a turnover here. Michael Griffin. So the fumble by Wilson, and the ball back to the Longhorns. Still have it at the 29 of North Texas. Now, Woody Wilson here just getting a little careless with the football, and he got a lot of orange bodies around there. You got to put two hands around that football. Just the contact knocked it out at the end of the play, and Michael Griffin came in from the secondary spot. At quarterback, it is going to be Jevin Snead, the true freshman from Stephenville at 6'3", 215. Out of sync just a bit. Timeout, North Texas. And now it's North Texas. So we'll come back. We'll see also Henry Melt, big sophomore running back at 6'3", 270 for the Longhorns. As the Horns control earlier today, we talked about some of the rules and the changes, and there is a coach's challenge this year. And that's what Randy Crystal is going through right now as the challenge came from Daryl Dickey and the North Texas sideline. They wanted to know if Woody Wilson's knee was down. But Taking 35 of the last 36 here, including 15 straight. The coach's challenge stands as called on the field. First down. I don't think that's the terminology Daryl Dickey was looking for. <laughs> well, you got to try it, and I don't. I don't fault him for that. It was close. But that's one of the things you go on your quarterback meeting, you talk to your quarterback and say, hey, you got to protect the football a little bit more. So now some of the backups and opportunity. Jevin Snead has Henry Melton. And how would you like to be one of those defensive in the front seven, the defensive guys for the Mean Green? Look at a 270-pound running back after you've been out there all day. Now even chasing the quick guys and Jamal Charles and Selvin Young, and now this is a different back altogether. Barrels his way for a couple. Miller over there along with Holman. And our eHarmony game summary. A solid beginning for a young man, and he was impressive. He didn't make many mistakes today, did he, Colt McCoy? I think Colt McCoy really solidified himself as a, as a bona fide starter here for Texas, and Swede did a great job on the outside catching the football, and their offense has rolled pretty well. I think that uh, Mac Brown's got to be pleased with the oh, debut of his quarterback and needed his backup quarterback, as we're seeing here, Jevin Snead playing. And the real story, which doesn't show up on that, uh, the defense, Gene Chizik, the coordinator, and Dwayne Aquina, they've got to be real pleased with what they've seen as Melton. Not Jamal down, Charles. It's over, it's over, it's over. He's got to just run downhill, and he's got to do the 24. But they've got to feel good. Uh, Jamario Thomas is a good running back. He is. He's solid. He's got good quick feet. He's able to make people miss. And, and they contained him. Yeah. I tell you, it's just the defensive front, though, overall, up front for Texas. It really dominated this game from the start because they didn't let North Texas get started early in the ball game, and that allowed Texas to get some separation and, and propel them here to where they're at in this ball game. So, overall, it's not a, uh, a bad outing. It's just an outing that you're playing against a, a team that's probably a lot more talent. North Texas, not the talent level yet that uh, Texas has. Jevin Steed with the strike to Hardy, but short of the first down by about two yards. You know, a lot of that comes, Joel, as far as talent level on your football team is how able do you recruit. And talk a lot of the Big 12 coaches at the Big 12 media days this year, and they talk about the Longhorns and how they recruit now for Matt Brown. It's not so much in a recruiting mode as they are in a selection mode. And I asked Mac about that directly, and he says, you know, here in the state of Texas, we've got such a great relationship with the high school coaches and the players, and the young play players coming up out of high school as a freshman, sophomore, junior, they've seen the record that Texas has had, and they've seen their success. And so they do feel like that they have a foothold here in Texas to be able to select the best players, perhaps, from this state alone. On fourth down, Steve breaks the tackle, gets the first down. And when we talked to Mac about that, he also said, now, you get your recruits, but you're not always perfect either in no. your selections. So because he, he's, he admitted, he goes, now after a national championship, you're right. It is. The kids want to come here. You bet. 
And you got to be selective. You got to be smart about it. And you really don't know. Sometimes you make commitments to a young man as a junior. And, you know, he hasn't even played. He's got two more years to go. So uh, interesting in how the, how that process all works and how they evaluate them. You got to have kind of a crystal ball to see how they fit into your program. Melton. On the side of Jevin Sneed on first down for the 14. Not much available that time for Melton, but he still battles for three down to the 11. Miller over there, the tackle. You know, we're talking about how things change as far as conditioning and so forth. Well, this summer, pretty much the whole team stayed here in Austin, and they, they practiced seven on seven by themselves. The defensive backs, the wide receivers, the running backs, they all go out there and do pass scale. And guess what? The big guys, they said, hey, no, we want a part of that. They're out there doing one-on-one, -on -one, so it's almost the entire front uh, fronts on both offense and defense were out there practicing all summer together, and that's how you build championships. The guys right. are developing that want-to attitude. They want to go out there. They want to practice, and, that, and, and Matt Brown says, hey, when you got guys who have that kind of work ethic, you have to ask them to slow down. Melton on the delay. Yeah, he hammers his point oh, home, doesn't yeah. he? He was following a nice pull uh, for Ulitowski, the offensive lineman, a little counteraction. Well, there was a linebacker or a free safety back there that uh, took the very last couple of yards of that hit, and pow, Henry Melton running downhill like that. He's a low, 270 pounds, not easy to tackle. So it'll be third, man, less than a yard. You talk about a running back who's 270 pounds, and you think, well, why don't you want to lose, have him lose some weight? Mac told us, hey, we've thought about that, but his body fat doesn't allow him to do that. He's naturally just a big guy. Sneed on the sneak, first okay, down. So he's got it inside the five. Back to Henry Melton, the sophomore from Grapevine, Texas, and he is a load. As Mac told us, his uncle Ray Crockett had a great career. He played his college ball at Baylor, all Southwest Conference, all everything down there. 13 years in the NFL, and even Ray has said, you ought to go to Andrew. You ought to go do this. Yeah. And Henry is he's not receptive to the idea. Well, big old Henry, he likes to be a running back. That's his first goal. And he actually played some, some defensive end in the spring here in the, in the Texas spring season. Did well. Got a couple sacks. Got back there. Showed some showed some effort off the edge. And there may be another, another spot in his future on this football team. Jumbo formation. Melt bouncing out to the score. Touchdown, Texas. <laughs> Now, pretty good Henry Melton, his first chance, and yeah. he made the most of it today. Now, give him the ball inside the five-yard line and let him make a, make something happen. Good blocking out front. You got your wide receiver blocking, almost getting the pancake. Henry Melton doing a good job of the finish off, getting into the end zone. I think it's going to be pretty fun for these two quarterbacks today. You know, you got Colt McCoy and Jevin Sneed. Jevin Sneed's birthday is today, and Colt McCoy's got his on Tuesday. So those guys are... Having fun here playing on the field. Special birthday wishes too. Yeah, Johnson is in a battle for place kicking duties with Hunter Lawrence. And it has been real tough for Greg Johnson, but he has been perfect. Like the Longhorns for the most part. It is 7 with 726 to play. And welcome back, Austin Joel Myers. Gary Reese's Jim Knox. Time now for our Kia Sera call to the game. Second and eight for McCoy and the Longhorns. Plenty of time and a wide open. Lyman Tweed, look out. Too easy. Third play of the game. Touchdown, Texas. And that's the day for Lima Tweed and the Longhorns taking what they wanted for the most part. And that'll be something that uh, those two remember for a long time. I think in particular, uh, Colt McCoy, first touchdown pass ever as a collegiate football player. You always got to remember that first time. Muzzy will take it at the nine. Oh! Get out of the way. What a pop as the Longhorns had Obanaya down there, the reserve running back. That hurt from here. <laughs> College football triple Holly Jones coming up from Lincoln, Nebraska. Matt Phillips is back in at quarterback for the Mean Green of North Texas. And they, we both know they want to get ready for their conference season. They have taken four of the last five league titles of the Sun Belt Conference. They want to find out who they could use. No wigway. Great layout. Almost caught it. Griffin was on his back. 
but and that's Marcus. But what a I, just parallel to the ground, everything but the catch. Perfect throw that time by Matt Phillips. Lays it out there very nicely. This almost looked like the same play that uh, Woody, had, Woody had thrown out there as well, and the ball should have been caught. And wow, that, that, that may be looked at here in the replay officials because it looked like he might have had control of it. The ground caused the fumble, so be interesting to see if these guys upstairs decide to take a second look at this. If they did want to look at it, they'd buzz the officials on the field. Second it's and ten. Dead. It's going to be second and ten. It was a perfect throw, though, by Matt Phillips, by far his best of the day. And on the run, it's lost by Muzzy, and he took a shot at the end of the play from Robert Joseph, the true freshman from Port Arthur. Getting up kind of slow is Muzzy. Great shot, you know, great hit that time on the outside, no doubt about it. And you can make hits like that, you might find your spot on that field. He is just a true freshman at 6'2", 195. Oh, hate to see that. Pain on the face of Zach Muzzy, and especially this late in the third game, it's 49 to 7. So it's going to be third and 10 at the 20. Phillips out of the gun with two to each side. Blitz, and it's knocked away. The big guys will be after it, and it's a touchdown for Texas. Coming up with it, Aaron Lewis, the sophomore from Albuquerque. Well, pretty much a jailbreak here. North Texas couldn't hold them out, and they brought three or four up there on Matt Phillips. Ball is knocked down, and pretty much an easy opportunity here. You bring in four or five extra. You see on the outside, you got a blitz rusher there, and you got one free inside. Big ball here trying to pick it up. Oh, got it knocked away, but uh, one of his buddies picks it up in the end zone. Yeah, Ben Alexander, he thought he had it. He thought he had he it. He really thought he had it. That's dumb. <laughs> Aaron Lewis, though. Aaron is happy that he didn't get it. <laughs> he's going to be celebrating tonight as Johnson slips the upright. 55-7, to seven, Texas. Seven of the field, six and a half to play. And we'll come right back to Austin after this word. Following the point after, it's now 56-7. Texas on top, six and a half to play. And a busy offseason, he had a national championship, but Mack Brown also tried his hand at acting during the offseason. Let's take a look at some of those clips. Friday Night Lights. Action, anything to get these guys kind of out of position and get their line having to cheat. You don't do tonight. What do you do the night before the game? You've never been a head coach the night before the game. <laughs> you don't even know what you're going to do. I mean, you got that kind of that deer in the headlights look that I'm a little worried about you stepping up to the plate. You know, the other thing some people think is you got to have a great quarterback to win a, a championship. That's obviously not true. <laughs> I love that tag. <laughs> obviously not true, uh, right back, sure. Yeah, but you got to love to have one. And you know Vince is watching right now. Yeah, he played, like, started hmm. for Tennessee last night to win. Vince Young, you don't need a quarterback, huh, Matt? That's fun. Friday Night Lights, and that starts, I believe it's October. It premieres. So it'll be fun. And I know Matt had a good time with it. No wigway. He'll chase it down back at the goal line, but he won't make it back very far. And now it's kind of cleanup time. And that was a cleanup by Eric Jackson with a defensive back. Well, kind of when it rains, it pours. And this is a mishandled kickoff, obviously. And the Longhorns just kind of covering up. And he's got to bring it out. It's not going into the end zone. So you got to take your lumps. And here's one right here. So it's back at the four for North Texas. Now you want to get out of here healthy. We already see Muzzy with the pain on his face over on the far side. Hopefully he's okay. But your conference season, and the guys in Denton have done a good job with this program, Daryl Dickey. That is everything. Well, they've always they've they've always had some challenging games at the beginning of the season. They're really trying to test themselves and building their program and doing some things with some games where they probably don't have a real realistic chance to win, but maybe a little economic incentive yeah. to come play Day the games. Paydays aren't bad. We're not talking candy bars. Robertson, and close, but it wasn't a safety as he was wrapped up by Brandon Foster off the edge, the junior from Arlington. Yeah, everything closed up inside and nowhere for him to go. Evan Robertson here in the back, trying to run the power play inside, but just collapses on the, in the defense and 
got Foster in there with the first hit. Got more Longhorns to follow, but he's definitely outside, and they knocked him back in the end zone, so it's certainly not a safety. It'll be second down, back at the two, a loss of two. Now, the most important thing right now, keep the clock moving. Get these young men out of here healthy. Well, the end came up. Draylon Ross is lining up a tight end. It'll be a false start back to the one. Prior to the snap, false start offense, number 92. Half the distance to the goal. It remains second down. Looking ahead now, Gary, for the Mean Green. Yeah, they got SMU, which is a crosstown rival, so to speak, for them. They're up in Denton. And SMU obviously down in Dallas and Tulsa at, at, at Tulsa at Akron and then Middle Tennessee State. So that first month, pretty active for them. But I think they feel like in the next few weeks they're going to probably have a chance to win some ball games. Phillips stays in there at quarterback from the one. And well timed on the outside as it looked like Johnny Quinn was going to get it, but it was Ryan Parker over there to make the play. Let's head back to the studio. All right, thank you. And Vandy did hang in there on the road. So now third down at about 13. And the grab by the big guy, who they list as the defensive end. He held on to it. It'll be a funny situation. Coming up for North Texas, Robert Joseph made the stop. Yeah, you don't see too many 92s playing tight end catching football, but hey, line him up there and let him play. Now you got a punt in out of your end zone. Not a not an easy thing to do here. Well, we had mentioned that the bus broke down. No air conditioning for two of the three buses for North Texas. And the one for head coach Darrell Dickey was about a half hour behind because it couldn't go past 40, 45 miles an hour. Hopefully, going home. They have a new set of buses. And what I've been told is they've already changed bus companies. So. <laughs> Coach Dickey got that handled pretty quick when he got here. It'll be Quan Cosby. Or check that. Dickey Brown go, bringing it go. back. And will he bring it back? Yes. Breaking tackles. And by the jersey. Otherwise, Brown. Had a couple of blocks down the sideline. So a timeout with 3.43 to play. An auspicious debut. Colt McCoy. And 53 seconds for the Longhorns in their home opener. And opening up the defense of their national championship. Yeah, they look strong, especially on the defensive side. You see 56 points on the board, but what they did defensively, that really stands out. Matt McCoy, the senior from Dallas, is in at quarterback. Their third of the day. Nice to see. And hammering the ball ahead. His first carry of the day is Ryan Palmer. Well, the first two quarterbacks for Texas today kind of take a look at what they did, and a pretty good day, I think, for Colt McCoy. Great debut, 12 for 19, the three touchdowns, and then actually ran one across or kind of pushed it across. Devin Snead, three for seven. The one interception that he did throw actually was a ball that should have been caught, went through his receiver's hand, so really not a bad effort by him as well. So I think both of them, the combination, really give Matt Brown uh, something to hang his hat on and say, hey, we've got a couple of good ones out there, and uh, we're just going to keep building on them. Now it's going to be a gain of eight, second and two, inside the 39. And enough for the first down inside the 35, and actually that's Hobbs carrying it. As they are going three and four deep, actually four and five deep now. And we'll talk about some of the changes overall. Well, the Longhorns, of course, changing the quarterback. Other changes well, in the Big only, 12. Yeah, there's only three quarterbacks that are coming back from last year, so everyone pretty much has the change except for, for Meyer at Iowa State. Baylor has Sean Bell and Zach Taylor at Nebraska. Everybody else has a new quarterback, something different, so there's a lot of things new in the Big 12 this year, and everyone's trying to build a little bit of offensive identity with the, the new quarterbacks. Bob stays in the backfield. He'll keep running the football. And that time... They caught up with them. You know, we talked about recruiting earlier about uh, Texas and how they've gone about things. Well, actually, I, I think the 
end of the tunnel is pretty bright for North Texas because of some of the things they've got going on on their campus and what they're doing with their program. Daryl Dickey, since he's been there, they've made some dramatic changes. They've got a brand new athletic complex on the south side of uh, Interstate 35, if you know anything about Denton, Texas, and they've actually acquired several hundred acres in an old school that they've actually built a new athletic facility and complex over there with practice fields. They've got other sports involved over there as well. So that program is growing leaps and bounds, and it's a first-class facility that I know they can recruit to very well. And the plans are within the next five years to start uh, a new stadium construction over there in Denton. So they've got a bright future for, for their facilities, and I think it's only going to help in their recruiting game. Well, looking ahead for the Texas Longhorns, and we just saw that schedule. Of course, Ohio State, <laughs> it's wild to talk about Ohio State. This well, town the whole week, Gary, is going to be a lot of fun. Well, those are the two games that you have to look at it in the high, on this schedule that Texas is looking at. And although Mac Brown won't let his players look at it that way, everybody else in the country is looking at those two dates against Oklahoma and obviously Ohio State as those are the two games that are going to either make this team or break this team and give them a chance to repeat as national champions. And look at the end of October at Nebraska, at Texas Tech. Those are real difficult games. Yeah, those, but those first two, though, are the most important. If they can get by those, they're going to have a lot of confidence going into those latter weeks. And that should be the final snap of the contest, that carry, and it will be. So a successful beginning for Colt McCoy, also Jevin Sneed, and overall for the Texas defense. They finished 10th in total defense last year, 8th in fewest points allowed, and Gary, the defense looks as good as ever. Well, the defense is really flying around. The defensive front played especially well. I think the secondary is really explosive out there. I think there's bright a bright future for that, that Texas defense. Offensively, I don't know if you can do anything better than come out and play like uh, Colt McCoy did, really. No butterflies look like, and I think it's going to be a great weekend for him. He's going to celebrate this win, his first one as a collegiate quarterback. And Jevin Sneed played, as well, played well also, so I think both quarterbacks came in, answered a bunch of questions about them that people had, even you know, across the nation, wondering what's happening at Texas, and I think they get a little glimpse of it today. You know, I love this scene at the end of the game because these are two teams from in-state, and that's what we've got on FSN tomorrow with TCU and Baylor, and there's a lot of good football in Texas, and these teams, that kind of respect, it's always great to see. Well, out of the state of Texas every year, about 350 Division I scholarship signees, and a lot of these guys played against each other in high school. Some are teammates and right. some, some of those things, so there's a lot of these guys that know each other, and this is good sportsmanship, and it's just a little bit different class of athlete right now that the University of Texas has as compared to North Texas, but still, in their own conference, North Texas is, is a pretty formidable ball club. Daryl Dickey has had a nice run, and it will continue this year at North Texas. But as you mentioned, it, it's a different level, and the Texas Longhorns now one of the top five elite programs in the nation. But well, looking back on what developed, and there's the young man we were talking about at the top of the telecast, Colt McCoy, the redshirt freshman from Tuscola, and he did not disappoint anybody. Now, early on through his first touchdown pass of the year and his career to Lima Sweet, his run after the catch, and he just delivered the ball on timing throughout the day and made good decisions, and he actually showed that he had the ability to move his feet, move the ball with his feet a little bit here on a nice 22-yard scramble out of the pocket. So. Colt McCoy doing well, and Jevin Steed decided he gets in the action as well. Shows that he's capable of leading, running that offense. Matt Brown says, hey, they're the same guy, and when they get him out there, both of them are going to compete. They're both winners in their own right coming out of their high school programs, and now the chance to play today. For both those two, I think they've uh, shown a lot of future for, for the Texas offense. Good numbers, real clean numbers, actually. You don't make a mistake there, and that's the key. Yeah, that you don't those, beat yourself. Some of those uh, missed opportunities there were drop passes by his receiver, so I think that uh, Cole McCoy really played a pretty good uh, ball game overall, and I think that Mac Brown and Greg Davis are looking at, the, at this as a, a great uh, debut for that young quarterback. Well, Lyle Senline left early, and we hope that's not anything serious. Hopefully, it's just precautionary measure. They retaped the ankle. He didn't. He, he did come back out for one series, and then he went back in. That's the anchor, your center of your offensive line. Well, he's the center that they've relied on, and they wanted to have in that program to be up there and, and to potentially lose him, especially next week against Ohio State. Looks like you're probably going to have to play an alternate. Who that would who that would actually be? They may actually utilize Cedric. Excuse me, Charlie Turner is kind of a guard slash, uh, slash center in that role to play center for him. So it might be a little bit of a difficult situation for, for Texas next week if Sunline is not able to play. Yeah, if you're looking ahead to Ohio State, and we can now. Mac didn't want to talk about Ohio <laughs> State at all when we got together with him this week. 
but looking ahead, what area would you like to see the most improvement from Texas going into that game? Well, heck, there's a lot that uh, went well for them today. I don't think that there's a whole lot wrong with their situation. You take a look at what's going on against North Texas, and it didn't allow but 87 yards passing and 400 yards of total offense, and the only thing is just a couple of miscues with the turnovers, the one interception and the one punt uh, fumble that they had. Let's head downstairs. Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Here's one of the team leaders of the, this team, senior Selvin Young. Two touchdowns today. Looked like the freshman, uh, no problem. Yeah, he did pretty good. He came in and uh, did what was expected of him. So, you know, we was proud of him today. He looked like he was having fun and, and wasn't worrying about too much, too many things. All right, freshman, I did, uh, I did say, Selvin, you are the vocal leader of this team. You're a senior. You lost 16 pounds, and it looks like you're back to your old self. It feel good, man. It ain't feel like this in a long time, you know. We put a lot of work in this summer, you know. Uh, me, along with a lot of other guys, we pushed each other, and, you know, we felt like pushing each other during the summertime was going, you know, uh, better for us. So, you know, I did what I had to do, and everybody else did too. All right, congratulations to the big game, Selvin. Let's get Mac Brown real quick. Coach, tell us about the freshman quarterback. He finished strong, played with a lot of poise. Well, uh, both of them played well. I thought Colt showed so much poise throughout the day, and and he handled checks, and they blitzed him a whole lot early. They had too many in the box to run the ball, and we're really pleased with him. Jevin came in, and the least bit antsy, but I thought he settled down and did well in the end. So right, we're real, pleased with both. Real quick, you ready for Ohio State? Well, we are. What a, what a great time. I, I'm, I hope they'll win today, and I'm sure they will, and, and have number one and number two in Austin, Texas. Is available on ESPN.